Have you ever noticed that many stories have a similar pattern? There's always a character who goes on an adventure, makes some new friends, encounters obstacles, fights some bad guys, and returns home a completely changed person. Well, this is because of an old story structure that's been shared throughout time, known as the hero's journey. Coined by academic Joseph Campbell in 1949, the hero's journey has been used in movies and TV shows for the last few decades. But what exactly is the hero's journey? In Joseph Campbell's own words, a hero ventures forth from the world of common day into a region of supernatural wonder. Fabulous forces are there encountered, and a decisive victory is won. The hero comes back from this mysterious adventure with the power to bestow boons on his fellow man. Campbell rendered this narrative arc in the form of a circle, with one half representing the ordinary world, and the other in the special world. Today you'll find this three-act structure as the format of many Hollywood films. One of the best examples, though, is George Lucas's classic, A New Hope. So without further ado, let's dive into The Hero's Journey. First, The Ordinary World. This is the beginning of our story, where our hero is a lesser version of himself. In A New Hope, that's our main character, Luke Skywalker. A lowly farmer, his world is bleak and boring. While not every ordinary world in The Hero's Journey has to be desolate in the physical sense, in the psychological sense of our character, it must represent where the limits are plainly set. Next, the call to adventure. This is where the hero is faced with an event, problem, or conflict that calls them to begin their adventure. Here, Luke Skywalker is called to his adventure by R2-D2 when he's played a message containing secret information that must be delivered to Ben Kenobi. When he finds Kenobi, he discovers the truth about his past and is invited to become a Jedi Knight. This brings us to Refusal of the Call where our hero declines out of fear, insecurity, or any number of issues. Here, Luke refuses Kenobi because he's afraid to leave his aunt and uncle. Meeting the Mentor Here our character meets the Mentor, who gives him advice, wisdom, or information to prepare him for the journey ahead. The Mentor here is obviously Ben Kenobi. It's me. Crossing the Threshold This is when the hero leaves their ordinary world and crosses the threshold into adventure. After the murder of his aunt and uncle, it is clear that Luke can no longer refuse the call. He returns to Kenobi and pledges to go to Alderaan and learn the ways of the Force like his father before him. This brings us to tests, allies, and enemies. The hero learns the rules of the new world, endures tests, meets new friends and allies, and comes face to face with the enemies. Luke and Kenobi hire Han Solo and Chewbacca to take them to Alderaan. Aboard the Millennium Falcon, Kenobi puts Luke to the test giving him his father's lightsaber to test his skills against a small training droid. Approach to the inmost cave. The plan to take on the central conflict is set in motion. The hero encounters setbacks which require him to try a new approach or adopt different ideas. In our story, they need to bring the Death Star plans to Alderaan, but they come to find the planet has been destroyed. They are then pulled into the Death Star by a tractor beam. Realizing the princess is on board, a new plan is concocted. This leads us into the ordeal. Things go wrong, and more conflict is introduced. The hero faces more obstacles, some of which can lead to a life crisis. After splitting up, Kenobi goes to deactivate the tractor beam, while the others go to rescue Leia. After a series of obstacles, they return to the ship with the princess, only to watch as Ben Kenobi sacrifices himself so they can escape. No! Luke has lost his mentor. The reward. After surviving the ordeal, the hero now has what Joseph Campbell calls the sword, a reward they've earned that allows them to take on this central conflict. After saving the princess and retrieving the Death Star plans, they now have the knowledge to destroy the Galactic Empire's greatest weapon. This leads us into the road back. The hero now sees the end of the tunnel. Little do they know, they're about to face more tests and more challenges. Heading back to the hidden rebel base with the Death Star plans in hand, they are suddenly followed by TIE fighters, forcing them to defend their ship, which they succeed. The Resurrection the climax of the story. Here the hero faces the final test using everything they've learned so far. Luke must prepare to take on the Death Star. When engaged in this epic space battle, Luke is the only fighter to get within the trenches of the Death Star. Being pursued by Darth Vader, Luke nearly is destroyed, but not before Han Solo clears the way. Using the Force and everything his mentor Kenobi taught him, he fires upon the weak spot of the giant station and destroys it. The Return with the Elixir the hero brings their knowledge back to the ordinary world. Here Luke and Han return triumphantly to the rebel base and receive medals for their heroism. 
Remember, these steps don't necessarily have to be in this particular order. It's a basic structure that can be shaped to fit your story's needs. So how can we use the hero's journey in our own screenplays? While you don't need to follow the hero's journey beat by beat, it's a great blueprint to tell a story. When you're struggling to figure out what should come next, take a moment to reflect on this narrative arc as a guide. Thank you for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.